So this is again chapter 11, part, uh, section one from Republic to Empire, part three. Um, so this is going to start by answering question the, the all the parts to question number three. And question number three in the section review assessment questions is identify what areas of the world did the Romans take over and why did trade increase during the Pax Romana, right? And then we're also hopefully going to get through question number four and question number five. So Rome's growing empire. Again, I'm going to set my uh, timer to keep it around 10 minutes. Rome's growing empire. When Rome became an empire, it already controlled most of the Mediterranean world. Augustus and the emperors who followed him further expanded the empire. Some emperors conquered territories to control hostile or very violent neighbors. Other Roman leaders wanted to gain control of gold, farmland, and resources. By the early ADs 100, so now we're going to cross over from BCs before Christ um, or the before the Common Era into ADs or after Christ or the Common Era. By the early 100s, the Romans had taken over Gaul and much of Central Europe. Under the Emperor Claudius, the Romans conquered most of the island of Britain. Rome also controlled Asia Minor, Mesopotamia, and the eastern coast of the Mediterranean. All of North African coast belonged to Rome as well. So if we take a look at the map, you can see um, that the Roman Republic, so at the end of Julius Caesar's death, so right around 27 BC and, and before that, so before Julius Caesar, they controlled everything that was orange. So most of Spain, part of Gaul, all of the Italian peninsula, Greece, um, part of where Mesopotamia is today, and Carthage because they won the Punic War. So they had just that area of North Africa. And then after Caesar's death, not only did they have that, but what Caesar added was all of France or the rest of Gaul, um, the rest of the um, this area here, um, all of and a bigger chunk of North Africa. And then at the end of Augustus's reign, so Augustus lived for a really long time. Remember that's Octavian or, or, or uh, Caesar's son. He lived a full life, um, like he did not get killed early like his father did. And so he is adding everything that's including the dark green. So all of Spain, all of Gaul, all of this area of Southern and Eastern Europe. Um, we have this area here, he's controlling all of Egypt, remember, um, Mark Antony was married to Cleopatra. When they died, he took over all of Egypt. So we have all of that area as well. And then the biggest it ever got, right, is what's all in color. So that's where we now include the area of Mesopotamia. Um, we have all this area here in Asia, um, all of North Africa, and we get even into what is known um, as the United Kingdom. So this up here that's, um, uh, I don't know, what is that, um, brown or tan? This is Scotland and this is Ireland. So they don't get over there, but they get most of Great Britain. So what is known today as England is as far north as they got. They also are on the Rhine River. So this is what is present day Germany. So they get up that far as well. So they're all over the place. So that answers question 2A, where did they get to? So they included the island of Britain. They also controlled Asia Minor, Mesopotamia, the eastern coast of the Mediterranean, all of North Africa, all of the Mediterranean Sea area, France and Spain. All right, continuing on. The Roman conquest promoted trade. Oh, this is two, uh, this is question three. Um, three B is gonna be in this paragraph. So three A was this, uh, we just answered this is now three B. The, the Roman conquest promoted trade. People in Rome needed raw materials that were lacking in Italy. Many of the materials, though, could be found in Rome's provinces, the outlying areas that the Romans controlled. Traders brought in metal, cloth, and food from the provinces to the city. They also brought more exotic goods like spices and silk from Asia and animals from Africa. In return, the Romans sent goods made by artisans to the provinces. These goods included jewelry, glass, and clothing. To pay for their trade goods, Romans used currency or money. They traded coins made out of gold and silver for the items they wanted. These coins allowed the Romans to trade with people even if they had no items their trade partners wanted. Nearly everyone accepted Roman co coins, which helped trade grow even more. The first 200 years of the Roman Empire was a time of general peace and, up and prosperity. 
stable government and a well-run army helped Rome grow wealthy and wealthy in safety. There were no major wars or rebellions in the empire. We call this peaceful period the Pax Romana or the Roman peace. It lasted until the 180s ADs. So for 200 years, so that's a lot of different people coming over and taking care of the government. Um, most people are living 80 years or so, or the most, you know, between uh, about the same lifespan that we have today, um, a little shorter, but not by a whole lot. So you have several different people and different generations that are ruling Rome, but there's no major war, there's no major crises. It's not like the end of the Republic where there's rioting and there's fighting everywhere and there's civil wars all the time. It's really, really stable. And so it's known as the Pax Romana. During the Pax Romana, the emperor's, empire's population grew. Trade increased, making many Romans wealthy. As a result of these changes, the quality of life improved for people of Rome and its provinces. Reading check, identifying cause and effect. How did Rome's territory's expansions affect trade? Well, as Rome traded more and more and covered more and more land, they had more and more things that they could trade. And because they used coins, you didn't have to have a product necessarily that you were selling that the person that needed to get. So you could just use money like we do today. You don't have a, a service that the person needs, but you need their product. You can just give them coins and they were accepted all throughout the known world. Um, so we have, uh, let me see if I can find the what the book says, the reading check. With expansion, the population grew, increasing trade. So as there were more people and more area, there was more trade. Right? So pretty simple. All right, Rome's accomplishments. This is going to help with question four and question number five. Okay, The Romans made lasting achievements in science, engineering, architecture, art, and art. In addition, Rome's literary tradition and legal system remain influential today, or we still use it today. Science and engineering. The Romans took a practical approach to their study of science and engineering. Roman scientists wanted results that could benefit their society. They studied the stars, stars to produce a calendar. They studied plants and animals to learn how to obtain better crops and meat. To improve health, Roman doctors studied the works of the Greeks. One great doctor in the empire was Gallion, who lived in the ADs 100. He was a Greek surgeon who studied the body. Gallion described the valves of the heart and noted differences between arteries and veins. For centuries, doctors based their ideas on Gallion's teachings. The Romans' practiced, practical use of science can also be seen in their engineering. Romans were great builders. They developed, and they developed new materials that helped the structures last. For example, the Romans made cement by mixing a mineral called lime with a volcanic rock and ash. The resulting materials dried to be very hard and watertight. The most, more important than the materials they used, though, were the designs the Romans had for their structures. They built their roads in layers. Each layer was made with a different material. This layered construction made the roads highly durable, or meaning that they lasted a very long time. Many Roman roads have not worn down even after centuries of traffic. And you can travel throughout Italy and still be traveling on roads that were originally made by the Romans. Um, the Romans also created lasting structures by using arches. Because of its rounded shape, an arch can support much more weight than other shapes can. This strength has allowed many arched Roman bridges to last until present day. And some of those are still being used by like modern cars and things. The Romans also use arches in their aqueducts. An aqueduct is a raised channel to use to carry water from mountains into cities. Because they crossed deep valleys, Roman aqueducts needed to be strong. Many still stand today. Roman builders also learned how to combine arches to create vaults. A vault is a set of arches that supports the roof of a building. Romans the Romans used vaults to create huge open areas within buildings. So if we go back and take a look at the picture, you can see this is an example of not only an aqueduct that is traveling from the mountains into the city, but it's a series of arches that's all the way down that constructs it. Um, and so it says the Romans were the first people to use a wide, wide use of the arch. The photograph at the right shows a Roman aqueduct supported by hundreds of arches. Below is a drawing showing how Roman engineers build their tall and strong arches. And so you can see they had a form. They had a wooden form that they would put in. They would use the brick then and they would lay all the brick and put all the mortar in. And then when it was solid and like when the mortar had dried, they would take this structure out and then put it in the next one. And so they could reuse the wooden structure over and over again as a form to then make the next arch. Um, so they would build it up and then finish it off the top. 
All right, so then we have art and architecture. The Romans weren't interested in only in practicality. They also admired beauty. This appreciation can be seen in the new designs of architecture and art that they created. Roman architecture also copied some older Greek designs. For example, the Romans used columns to make their public buildings look impressive. The Romans also occupied the Greeks or copied the Greeks by covering many of their buildings with marble. Their engineering techniques allowed the Romans to make new architectural advances. The vault, for example, um, led them to build huge structures, much larger than anything the Greeks could build. One such structure was the Colosseum in Rome, a huge building constructed for gladiator fights. Many other Roman structures are topped with domes. The Roman artists we know for their beautiful mosaics, paintings, and statues. Mosaics and paintings were used to decorate Roman buildings. Most Roman paintings were frescoes. A fresco is a type of painting done on plaster. Many Roman painters were particularly skilled at creating portraits or pictures of people. Roman sculptors were also very talented. They studied what the Greeks had done and had tried to recreate this brilliance in their own statues. Literature and languages. Uh, rich in art and architecture, Rome was also home to many of the great, greatest authors of the ancient world. One such author was Virgil, who wrote a great epic, which is a really long poem, about the founding of Rome in the Aeneid. Another was Ovid, who wrote poems about Roman mythology. In addition to the Roman writers produced uh, hist histories, speeches, and dramas that are still studied and enjoyed today. Virgil, Ovid, and other poets wrote in Latin, a language of government and law. The people throughout Ro the Roman world wrote, conducted business, and kept records in Latin. In the eastern half of the empire, Greek was just as important. Latin later developed into many different languages. These languages are called the Romance languages. They include Italian, French, Spanish, Portuguese, and Romanian. Latin also influenced other languages. Many non-Romance languages, including English, contain Latin words. Words like etc., circus, and veto were all originally Latin terms. Latin words are also common in scientific terms and mottos law. Rome's greatest influence may have been in the field of law. Roman law was enforced across much of Europe, even after the empire fell. Roman laws con continued to exist in the kingdoms that followed. Over time, Roman law inspired a system called civil law. Civil law is a legal system based on the written code of laws, um, like the one are created by the Romans. Most countries in Europe today have civil law traditions. In the 1500s and the 1600s, colonists from some of these countries carried civil law around the world. As a result, many countries in Africa, Asia, and the Americas developed civil law codes as well. So we have civil law codes in the United States that are based on Roman law. So the Roman law created a system called civil law. Reading check, finding the main idea. How did Roman literature and language influence later societies? Well, because so many different parts of the world spoke Latin at one time, as their languages developed, they developed from Latin, and those created the Romance languages, known as Italian, French, Spanish, Portuguese, and Romanian, and Latin words are still used today and in different cultures, and so they have continued to influence. Uh, with expansion, oh, let me see what the book says as an answer. Uh, Latin evolved into the Romance languages and influenced other languages as well. Summary and preview. Augustus made the Roman Republic into an empire. The empire drew, grew beginning during its first 200 years and the Romans made lasting contributions to the world. In the next section, you will learn about the influential development that changed life in Rome, Christianity. All right, so if we look at the section assessment questions, video one, part one covered question one, A, B, and C. Video two covered question two, A, B, and C. This video covered question three, A and B, and question four, just read about the law code, and we just talked about languages. And then five is going back and looking at how these different sections were done in Rome and how they still influence today. So a good chart to use, this is one place to look at a quick fact about Roman accomplishments, what they did in government, engineering, architecture, art, and philosophy. So you can pick one from each category, talk about what the Greeks, I'm sorry, what the Romans did and then how we still use it today. So that would be question number five. Um, feel free to leave comments. Uh, 
email me or send me a message if you have any questions. And I hope that this helps with chapter 11, section one, a little bit. Bye.